Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about few very important characteristics of a flip-flop or in other words, I can say that we are going to discuss few very important attributes associated with a flip-flop. So most commonly used attributes are setup time, hold time and propagation delay of a flip-flop. But apart from these uh, characteristics, I am going to discuss one very important attribute and that is called minimum pulse width requirement. Usually no one talk about this attribute, but it is very important attribute and cannot be ignored. So in the first part of the video, we will discuss about the commonly used attributes, for example, setup time, hold time and propagation delay. And in the subsequent part of the video, we will discuss about minimum pulse width requirement. So now without wasting much time, let us get started. Friends, let us discuss the first and the important characteristic of the flip-flop and it is propagation delay time. Propagation delay time is measured whenever there is a transition on the output of a flip-flop and it is measured between the 50% level of the clock to the 50% level of the output transition. So for example, if this flip-flop is positive integral flip-flop, so then we will consider positive edge of the clock and at the 50% point on the triggering edge to the 50% transition on the output and this delay is called the propagation delay. Now one very obvious question can come to anyone's mind and usually propagation delay is measured when an input is applied until the time we get the output. But in this case, we are not taking the propagation delay from the D input to the Q output. But we are considering clock input to the Q output. Why? Because, for example, if you apply D input at here, at this point of time in the clock region, it will not be propagated to Q till there is no positive edge on this clock. So the actual D is transmitted to Q whenever there is a positive edge on the clock or in other words we can say at every positive edge of the clock this d is transmitted to q so we cannot specify a fixed value that d will be transmitted to q in this much time but with reference to passage of this clock we can say that d will be transmitted to q in this much time and that is the reason why we take propagation delay from clock to Q and not from D to Q. I hope that it would have answered your question. Friends, there is another propagation delay time associated with every flip-flop. As you know, there are two asynchronous inputs associated with every flip-flop called clear and preset. Their impact on the output does not depend upon the clock signal, so they are called asynchronous inputs. So this another propagation delay time is the time required for an asynchronous input to cause a change in the output. For example, in this case, I have taken this preset signal and this is Q output. Again, it is measured from 50% levels. So that means it is a time when preset is at the 50% point till Q get transitioned to the 50%. And this much time is called the propagation delay time for an asynchronous input. Now let us discuss a third very important characteristic of a flip-flop that is called setup time. Friends, as you know, the D will be transferred to Q whenever there is a positive edge or negative edge on the clock signal. Depending on the type of flip-flop we are using, if we are using positive edge trigger flip-flop, then on the positive edge of the clock, this D will be transferred to Q. If we are using negative edge trigger flip-flop, then on the negative edge of the clock, this D will be transferred to Q. We have taken positive edge trigger flip-flop in this example for illustration. But this is very crude level of definition. In actual practice, this D should be stable before some minimum time before the positive edge of the clock so that this D can be transferred to Q reliably. And this minimum time is called the setup time. 
if in case we apply d input somewhere here in the time domain it will cause our flip flop to go into meta stable state and we won't be sure what will be our output it can be logic 0 or logic 1 friends i have created a separate video wherein i have discussed in detail why a flip flop requires a setup time and a hold time and i will give its link in the description section now let us discuss the fourth very important characteristic of a flip flop it is called hold time as we already discussed we need to make the value of d stable for some minimum time before the clock edge and that is called the setup time now another very important thing we need to hold the value of d for some minimum time after this clock edge so that it can reliably pass to the queue and this minimum time after this clock edge is called hold time if we don't follow the hold time and we vary our d input somewhere here in the time domain this will cause our flip flop to go into meta stable state and we won't be sure the value of q after the clock edge it can be logic 0 or logic 1 independent of the value of d now we are going to discuss a very important characteristic of a flip flop called minimum pulse width requirement in fact this is a crux of our video now in these days almost all the static timing analysis tools give us a slack for this minimum pulse width requirement if slack is negative for this minimum pulse width requirement then our design will not work it should always be positive so now let us see what is this minimum pulse width requirement we always define a flip flop that if it is a positive trigger flip flop then d should be passed to q at the positive edge of the clock and similarly we define its behavior for the negative edge and we always say that in the static timing analysis we should fulfill the setup and hold requirement of a flip flop but we never talk about the duty cycle of a clock and this minimum pulse width requirement characteristic is associated with the duty cycle only let me define duty cycle for you for example this signal has 50% duty cycle that means the logic high remains 50% of the total time period of the clock signal similarly 75% duty cycle means the logic high remains 75% of the total time period of the clock signal and this 25% duty cycle means the logic high remains 25% of the time of the total time period of the clock signal friends now very important thing this flip flop cannot work on a clock with any duty cycle because this flip flop demands that inside the clock signal this logic high should remain for some minimum time similarly this logic zero should remain for some minimum time then only this flip flop will work properly otherwise it can go to a meta stable state now in the subsequent part of the video we are going to discuss why a flip flop requires this logic i for some minimum time and this logic zero for some minimum time this is a simple d flip flop having clock and d input as two inputs and as we know this d input should be stable for some minimum time before this clock edge and it is called setup time so this only form the basis of minimum logic zero width requirement so minimum logic zero should be equal to the t setup time of a flip flop now we also know that this d input should be stable for some minimum time after the clock edge and it is called hold time and there is another parameter called propagation time which is defined as a minimum time this d take to reach q after this positive edge of the clock and usually this propagation time is greater than the hold time but maybe in some architectures um, hold time can be greater than the t propagation time if t propagation time is greater than the t hold time then it forms a basis of minimum logic high width requirement so minimum logic high width will be equal to t propagation time if it is greater than the hold time if hold time is greater than the propagation time then minimum logic high width requirement will be equal to t hold time of the flip flop friends i have written minimum logic high width requirement 
and minimum logic low width requirement for a posterior edge triggered flip flop in a summarized way. Minimum logic high width requirement will be equal to propagation delay of a flip flop if propagation time is greater than hold time. And minimum logic high width requirement will be equal to hold time of a flip flop if hold time is greater than the propagation delay. We already discussed. Now at last minimum logic low width requirement will be equal to setup time of a flip flop. And similarly we can see the minimum logic high and low width requirement for negative edge trigger flip flop. Now for a negative edge trigger flip flop minimum logic low width requirement will be equal to the propagation delay of a flip flop if propagation delay is greater than the whole time. Minimum logic low width requirement will be equal to the whole time of a flip flop if whole time is greater than the propagation delay. Now at last minimum logic high width requirement for an active edge ticket flip flop will be equal to setup time of a flip flop. Now let us see the practical example of minimum pulse width requirement. I have taken this example. In this example minimum pulse width requirement of a flip flop is 500 picosecond. Assume high and low width requirement both are 500 picosecond. Then with 50% duty cycle clock we can use a clock of operational frequency 1 gigahertz. Let us see how. Because duty cycle is 50% and T on, it can be minimum 500 picosecond because the width requirement is 500 picosecond. As the duty cycle is 50%, so T off will be equal to T on, it will be also 500 picosecond. Now the time period will be equal to T on plus T off, that will be 1000 picosecond and frequency will be inverted of time period which will become 1 gigahertz. Now let us take another example. In this example minimum pulse width requirement of a flip flop is 500 picosecond only but the duty cycle of a clock is 20 percent. In this case we can use a clock of maximum 400 megahertz. Let us see how because the duty cycle is 20%. Now T on will be less than T off and minimum T on will be 500 picosecond because the width requirement is 500 picosecond. Now T off. T off will be 4 times the T on which will become 2000 picosecond and time period will become T on plus T off which will be 500 plus 2000 it will become 2500 picosecond. Now frequency will be 1 divided by time period which will become 400 megahertz. Now you see these width requirements and duty cycle together define the maximum operational frequency of our design. Friends with this I am going to close this video and I hope it would be quite informative for all of you. I request those viewers who have not subscribed my channel yet please subscribe it because we are going to launch many such videos in future. And for notification of the videos, don't forget to press the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching.